Hello, everyone. Last time we were talking about the solar system and the members of the solar system, and I think this is where we stopped. We talked about Pluto, and it was a dwarf planet. We gave the criteria for dwarf planets, and there's still more to the solar system than this. Uh, but this is where I wanted to stop at, at this point. Now, I do want to go on and talk about some sizes of things in the solar system and then move on beyond that. Well, look at the size of Earth and Venus compared to Pluto, Mercury, and Mars. Earth's pretty big. Earth's the biggest of these planets. Venus is about the same size. And again, Pluto's a dwarf planet, and these are major planets. Well, now, see how big Earth is? Take a look. Earth's not that big. Look, there's Earth. Look at Uranus and Neptune, about four times the diameter of the Earth, made of mostly well, gas and liquid. Well, look at Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn shown here without its very pretty, uh, magnificent uh, ring system. But look at Jupiter. Jupiter, you could put uh, over a thousand Earths inside Jupiter, 11 Earths across. Jupiter is big. It's the biggest planet in the solar system. See how big Jupiter is? It's not that big. Look, there's Jupiter. Here are the rest of the planets, major planets and Pluto. Well, look at the sun. Now, again, this is not a major planet. The sun is a star, the one star in the solar system. I mean, you could put over a million Earths inside the sun. The sun's enormous. Stars are enormous. Look how big the sun is. It's not that big. Look, there's the sun. You can't even see Jupiter here, which means you can't even see Earth. Not even a chance of seeing Earth. Look at the star Sirius, Pollux, and Arcturus. I mean, these are, these are giant stars. These are really big. I mean, it's not really called a giant star. Some of these are, like Arcturus is called a, a giant uh, but now take a look, look at the colors of these stars. Now, again, these are not real pictures of the stars. So they look like big marbles here. Look at Sirius, it's kind of white, but these other ones are kind of yellowish orange. Why would a star be white? And why would stars be more orange? Think of temperature. The hotter a star is, just like a burner at home or a flame. If you look at the center of a flame, isn't the hottest part of a flame the very center? And isn't that bluish? So the hottest stars are blue. What about the very outer part of a flame? Maybe kind of like reddish or orange. The coolest stars are reddish. Still very hot, but not as hot as a blue star. White's kind of like pretty hot. Not as hot as a blue star, but very, very hot. Well, think of also a poker in the fire or your coils if you have an electric stove uh, that uh, with, the, with the coils and uh, eventually when you, they get hot enough to give off visible light, they start glowing kind of like reddish. But if they were to get hotter, they get orangish. And even hotter, they would get white. Luckily on the stove, they don't get that hot. They don't get white, uh, white hot. But then it would get blue. Pokers in the fire, like an iron, an iron rod, an iron poker in the fire. You could probably get it white hot. Probably not to blue because it would probably be melting at that point. But it's different. the stars have different colors, not because of what they're made out of. They're made out of pretty much the same stuff, mostly hydrogen with some helium and uh, just traces of other elements. But it's the temperatures of stars. And that's, it's, that changes based on the mass of the star and also whether the star's dying or not. So look how big the sun is. Not that big. And look, and look at Arcturus. Arcturus is big. It's a big star. It's not that big. Look at this. There's Arcturus. You can't even see the, barely see the sun in this picture. Look, Rigel, Aldebaran, Betelgeuse, or Betelgeuse, and Antares. These are a thousand times bigger than the sun, approximately. There are stars twice as big as these, about 2,000 times as big as the sun. Stars get way up there. I mean, size, incredible. The sun is just a, a puny star compared to some of these others. Well, now, I mean, if you're talking about stars, you're not talking about the solar system, unless you're talking about the sun and what's going around it. Well, take a, let's, let's talk about the solar system a little bit more before we move on. Look at this, a crater. A crater not on the Earth. Well, I should say that. It is on the Earth but not, I mean, usually used to see craters on the moon, but this one happens to be on the earth. How could you tell it's on the earth? Yeah, clouds, little snow in the mountains here, blue sky. This is in Arizona. This is Arizona meteor crater ca caused by an asteroid, or actually a little asteroid called a meteoroid, striking earth about 50,000 years ago. And the, the asteroid was only about 150 feet across. Again, if it's, if it's that size, it's, it's right on the boundary between a meteoroid and asteroid. A meteoroid is an asteroid that is less than 150 feet across. So this thing might have only been 100 feet across. 100 feet? Not that much. It's like the length of a 
a basketball court. Well, the thing that struck was mostly iron. It struck 50,000 years ago, going about maybe 10 to 20 miles a second. So it comes in and the crater it makes is almost a mile across and 600 feet deep. And most of the material was blown. I mean, most of the iron in the, in the meteorite itself, it's called a meteorite once it hits. Um, it was a meteoroid before it hit, it's kind of weird. And most of that iron was turned to, to, to vapor or dust. But about 10% of the iron kind of like is, is, has been like charred and is scattered out along the, uh, throughout the desert here. And that's called a meteorite. And you can go here. This is called Arizona Meteor Crater, Northern Arizona, just a beautiful area where you have Flagstaff over here. The town Flagstaff's not so pretty, but the area is nice. Sedona is just beautiful. Grand Canyon, there are Native American cliff dwellings, there are volcanic cinder cones, just, it's just beautiful country. This is the part of Arizona that's nice. Phoenix area is not nice. It's like LA in the desert. Actually, LA is almost a desert. Well, you know, I lived in LA, I can say that. But Phoenix, I, the area around Phoenix is just beautiful. I mean, the desert's nice if you didn't have Phoenix area. Uh, but Northern Arizona is just magnificent. But look what you can find. You can find pieces of the meteoroid that hit, the asteroid that was in the asteroid belt for four and a half billion years until it struck Earth. And these little pieces are called meteorites. And I wish I could show you the meteorites. If you take astronomy four and we're in the classroom, who knows when we're gonna be in the classroom, but at some point, if you take astronomy four, you get to see the meteorites and, um, and hold them. This is a, called a Canyon Diablo iron, but there's different types of meteorites. There's stony irons. I just love these things. Stony iron, which is half iron, um, iron and nickel. And the other half is these olivine crystals and just beautiful. You cut a slice. Yeah, this is just, I mean, the Esquel, uh, they're named after where they, where they fell, where they were found. And this piece is just, it's a slice of one. You don't come looking like this, but if you slice it, you polish it, you etch it with acid a little bit. I don't know if you use with the stony irons, you wanna put some acid on those crystals, but uh, the, the, I mean, just beautiful. So this is a matrix of metal right here. That's, that's just shiny metal. You're not looking through it. And these are windows of crystals, like a stained glass windows here. Just beautiful. No, don't wanna show you that yet. I'm gonna stop the share here. So meteor. I, I talk a lot about meteorites, sorry. In astronomy four, if you ever take astronomy four and want to learn about meteorites, I just, I just love the subject. And uh, I've, I've found meteorites before, actually at Meteor Crater. I went with someone who uh, showed us how to find them. It's illegal to find the meteorites. It's called hunting for meteorites. It's illegal to take meteorites out of that area right now. Um, and the, actually meteorites are, they, they actually look like this. These, this is a Canyon Diablo. So we found some like this. When, we, when it was legal, when we got a permit, it's not legal anymore, but uh, I found ways of going back and doing it uh, without, well, without getting in trouble. Well, without getting caught, I should say. Well, I don't wanna talk about that now. All right, I should never talk about that actually. Now let's stop share. So let's talk about the solar system and then move on. So let's finish up with the solar system here. We've had the sun, right? There's the sun. Uh, one star in the solar system, we had the orbits of the major planets. We had to use the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And these are just showing parts of the orbits, right? They would go all the way around. I'm not, I'm just not doing that. Uh, but all the orbits of the planets back to Nep Neptune over here. I kind of moved it over to show Pluto where Pluto's orbit is here. But remember that's a dwarf planet. We even have the Oort cloud. There are other dwarf planets. Um, we have the Kuiper belt part of over here. This is, remember, this is the Kuiper belt where we have other objects kind of like Pluto and that's what made Pluto be a dwarf planet. We, we, we uh, demoted it. So now but we're going to change scale right now. All right. Now here's what I'd like you to do. I, I can't really see you doing this, but I'm going to kind of take your word for it. Take your thumb, your thumb, and hold it close to your eye. I don't actually, you know what? This works. I, I can see you doing it. I can, I can do it for you. Pretend this is your eye, like, like that. You see that? Well, you don't see that. That's just the, that's the, the, uh, the lens of this, of this uh, video camera. So now, what I'm gonna do now, look, I'm gonna hold my thumb, and that's, that's not my thumb, that's my thumb. I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna hold it here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pretend, pretend it's there. And look at the size of my thumb. I don't know how big it is on the screen. I mean, you can measure it if you want. I mean. You, take, you know, you could say, ah, that looks like a certain size on the screen, but we'll pretend that's your eye. Take your, I mean, 
I'm just taking my thumb. You don't have to do yours. Now look. What if your thumb gets closer to your eye? Doesn't it look bigger? It doesn't really look better. I mean, not that my thumb looked great anyway. Your thumb probably looks better than mine. But that's not the point. The point is, if something's close to you, it looks big. And if something moves farther away, it looks smaller. I mean, you know that, right? So now, let's look at the solar system here. We're in the solar system. The solar system looks big. Now, on the, on the whiteboard here, it doesn't look that big. But being in the solar system, it's pretty big. I mean, it took us you know, years, to, nine years to get to Pluto in a spaceship that went really fast. So the solar system is a big place. But what we're going to do is we're going to move back from the solar system. And as we move back, it's going to pretend we get way out of the solar system, way, way out of the solar system. Isn't it going to look smaller, right? If you could see the planets and the orbits of the planets, you really can't see orbits, but you can maybe see planets if sunlight's reflecting off of it. Well, the, the solar system is going to look smaller and smaller until eventually the solar system is going to look like that. Now, wait a second here. That's a little like a little dot of orange light. If you get far enough back, really, there's only going to be one thing you see in the solar system. There's only one thing giving off its own visible light. What is that? The sun. Eventually, if you were to move away from the solar system, you would just see the sun getting fainter and fainter and fainter and fainter until it's reduced to a pinpoint of light. Wait a second here. Does that remind you of something you might see at night? Pinpoints of light? Yeah, guess what? The stars. The stars look like, well, they look like the sun would look if you're far away from the sun. Those stars you see at night are, are mostly bigger than the sun. We talked about that. 90% are actually larger, uh, bigger. Well, larger is bigger. Hotter than the sun, brighter. But they look like pinpoints. And guess why? Because we're far away. Could there be planets and other stuff going around those stars? Could there be their own in their own systems? Yeah, probably more than 50%. I bet probably 90% of those systems that you see at night, or maybe even more, could be 99%. It's not just a star. It's a star with other things going around it. The other things might be other stars, but the other things probably at least 50% of the time could be planets, but you can't see that. If the sun's been reduced to a pinpoint, remember how big we said the sun was? You know what the planets have been reduced to? Nothing. You wouldn't see a planet. It's like seeing a spotlight in the distance uh, from 10 miles away. From 10 miles away, you might see a spotlight, but if there's a moth flying around the spotlight, are you gonna see that moth? Hell no. So. The planets around their stars are like see, trying to see moths, 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 M-O-T-H-E-S, moths, 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 I don't know, moth, all right, moths, like trying to see moths 10 miles away going around the light. You have no chance with your eyes. And even with a telescope, you, you may not see a moth going around a light 10 miles away. You probably won't, but maybe eventually we'll have telescopes that see them and we're actually starting to detect with telescopes planets going around other stars. Planets going around other stars. There are other ways to figure out they're there, not necessarily by seeing the, the planets there, but there are other ways. We're going to talk about that. So there's the solar system. And it's just, it's really, I'm going to write it down. If you're not sure what that is right here, what I've just marked down, write this down. The solar system. It's our system. It's our system. And you know what I'm going to put now? Remember we said the Oort cloud and comets would be like, would be around the solar system. No, no I'm going to put. No, you never. See, you would never see this. I'm going to try to do this, representing the Oort cloud, and kind of even be. It would be all around, right? Like a big sphere of comets. Now, I'm going to kind of blur this because there's not a way you're going to see that. That would be the Oort cloud. Still part of the solar system because those comets, little pieces of of ice ball, are going around the sun. So I'm kind of making this a mess. I'm going to get rid of some of that. So there, the Oort cloud of comets. You wouldn't see it, but I'm showing where it would be. Now, let's go somewhere. Let's leave the solar system and go somewhere else. Well, you know what? Night, all those stars you see, let's go to one of them. And which one would be the easiest to go to? Wouldn't it be the closest? Let's go to the closest star system out there. And I'm going to draw it. I'll try to. It's actually... It's a double star. It's a triple star system. It's a triple star system. A star there, a star there, a star there. It's three stars going around each other. And it is called, this is something good to write down. I mean, I think I'll, if I write something down, you should write something down. 
not just something down. You should write what I write down. I mean, you don't have to, but that's what I'm going to test you on. I don't test you on readings. I don't test you on other things that I don't talk about. I test you on what I talk about. So write down what I talk about and especially write down what I write down. Cause that's the stuff, the main stuff that I mean, you have those notes cause you can use the notes on a test. You'll be, you'll be home free. So write this down, solar system, here's the word cloud. Closest star system to the solar system. You gotta write that down, that's important. It's called the Alpha, you might know this name already, Centauri. T-A-U-R-I, fix that a little. Star system. I'm gonna put a star there because I know you're gonna to need to know that. I know that. I'll prove to you how I know that. I mean, you write it down. The Alpha Centauri star system. What this means is in the constellation we call Centaurus, the brightest star we see, which is actually three stars, we can't tell that with our eyes, it's called the, the brightest star is the Alpha in Centaurus, uh, out the brightest star belonging to Centaurus star system. It is, now the reason it's important, uh, you gotta write that down, not just the name Alpha Centauri. It is the closest star system to the solar system. Write that down. If I put a star next to it, write it down. It's probably going to be, I mean, it's more than likely going to be on the test. So what is the closest star system to the solar system? Now, why are we not calling it closest star? Well, really, it's not just one star, it's three. With those two called, now that's called Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, and that's actually called Proxima Centauri, the actual one that uh, averages a little closer to us. We call the whole thing the Alpha Centauri star system. I like you to know what a star system is. A star system, I'll, I'll write it down. Star system definition is a star and the bodies which orbit it. There we go. It's a star and the bodies which orbit it. Now, what can be orbiting a star? We know from our, our star system, the solar system, we know we have planets. We have what major planets, minor planets, dwarf planets, comets. We have satellites going around the major planets, right? So a star system is a star, whatever happens to be going around it. And it's not just planets necessarily and other you know, minor planets, dwarf planets going around a star. I mean, most of the time that's probably likely, but you know what goes around stars a lot? Well, <laughs> give you a hint. Look at this one, Alpha Centauri star system. What goes around the star besides planets? Other stars. So this is a triple star system. If it has three, there are a lot of double star systems with two. So here's a triple star system. And we've even discovered at least, well, we've confirmed at least one planet around Proxima Centauri. A planet that is in the habitable zone, which means it could have liquid water on it. We're gonna talk about that. So you could have multiple star systems, which is like this, it's a triple star system. And you could have planets too. We can have a, well, we'll talk about that. There's some exciting thing I'm going to talk to you about that. We'll save that for later. So now, now here's something important I want you to know. Well, if a, this, is the, this is a star system. It's called Alpha Centauri. Do you know what the name of our star system is? The solar system. That's our star system. There's only one solar system. Now, I know when you see videos where it says all the solar systems out there, that's wrong. It's, it's kind of like this. We live on a planet called Earth. Are there other Earths out there? Uh, no, I don't think so. Are there other planets like Earth? I 100% agree with that. But the, you see, it's a proper name. Earth's a proper name. That's our planet. So there's one Earth. There could be other things like Earth. It, and it's kind of like when you go out and see Mars or when you go out and see uh, uh, Jupiter, Saturn. Do you say, oh, look at those nice Earths up there? No, you don't. You call them by their proper name. It's kind of like what I, this is my problem when we have people calling other things like the satellites moons. When the moon is the name of proper name of ours. Well, the solar system is a proper name. Look at the capital S's here. Ca I know I probably should have done that capital Alpha Centauri, but you know what that means? It means there's one solar system, but there are billions of star systems maybe like the solar system. So if I were ever to ask you this on a test, which I will, 
How many solar systems out there in reality are there if you want to be really proper? One. But if I were to ask how many star systems, I wouldn't capitalize that. Oh, uh, billions. See, the solar system is the name of our system. It's the name of our star system. So star system is what it is. Solar system is its name. All right. You know what? Write that down. I, I'm gonna put, I, didn't, I didn't even write it. I didn't write it. But this is the, the solar system. There's one. Okay. There's one, that's, that's a one, that's with an underline on I'm gonna put a star there. There's one solar system, but there are many star systems. All right, I, I may be uh, beating a dead horse here. So sorry if I keep going on here. So there it is, Alpha Centauri star system and the closest star system out there. And I, I wanna show you this Alpha Centauri star system. So I'm going to, um, Now, what did I just do here? Is that sharing? 